Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer game to video. Today we're taking a look at a pretty convoluted graveyard combo deck, as you may have noticed from the introduction. The uh, short version of this deck is we win the game as long as we cast Harald Unite the Elves with at least two copies of Morit of the Frost in the Graveyard. How do we win the game with Harald Unite the Elves? That's where things get a bit more complicated to explain. So this 4-mana enchantment saga will always start from the first chapter. This is not one of those read-ahead sagas. So we will mill three cards, put an Elf or Tyvar card from our graveyard onto the battlefield. Okay, we've got four Tyvar cards in the deck with a Jubilant Brawler, and we've got eight Elves between four copies of Fauna Shaman and four copies of Morit of the Frost, which is a Changeling, so it also counts as an Elf. So the goal is to get back Morit of the Frost with our first chapter of Harald Unites the Elves. Morit is a 5-mana 0-0 zero zero changeling, can enter the battlefield as a copy of any permanent we control, except it's legendary and snow in addition to its other types, and if it was a creature it also gets an additional plus one plus one counter and is a changeling. But our goal is to copy Harald Unites the Elves with Morit of the Frost. So we now control a legendary Harald Unites the Elves, which will immediately trigger the first chapter, milling three cards and putting an Elf or Tyvar card from our graveyard onto the battlefield. Once again, we get back another Morit of the Frost from our graveyard, copying Harald Unites the Elves. So we very briefly would control two legendary copies of Harald Unites the Elves, which is not allowed due to the legendary rule. So one of them ends up back in the graveyard, which means we now once again have a Morit of the Frost in the graveyard that we can immediately return to the battlefield thanks to the first chapter of Harald Unites the Elves triggering from our fresh saga. And then once again mill three cards, return an Elf or Tyvar to the battlefield, rinse and repeat. And so by milling three every time we will mill our entire deck. Now how do we win the game with an empty library? Well the simple solution is Thassa's Oracle. How do we put it in play? Tyvar Jubilant Brawler is a card we're allowed to return from our graveyard with the first chapter from Harald Unites the Elves. So we simply instead of getting back Morit, return Tyvar use a minus two ability, mill three cards, and then return a creature card with mana value two or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, get back Thassa's Oracle, even if the opponent kills it in response, we have an empty library, so even with zero blue devotion, we win the game. Pretty simple. Now, of course, we do need to get double Morit of the Frost in the graveyard, and to do that, we've got a few self-mill effects, and also some discard effects and other tutors to help us in our quest. So starting at one mana, we've got the full set of Stitcher Supplier. When it enters or dies, we mill three cards. So perfect to play early. Chum Block can mill six total. And it's also a zombie, which as we'll find out is a pretty important creature type in this deck. Then we also have four copies of Crypt Breaker. A 1-1 one, one zombie can pay one on a black, type it, discard a card from our hand to create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. And we can also tap three untapped zombies we control to draw a card at the cost of one life. Both modes are very useful. If we have multiple zombies between our Stitcher Supplier, Crypt Breaker, Undead Butler, and even the zombies from Timurid Calls the Dead, we can turn Crypt Breaker into a pretty nice card draw engine. And especially in the slower matchups, that gives us time to draw into our Harald Unite Delves, or maybe some of our other combo pieces to set up the win and then at the first ability to discard and make a zombie not only will enable the second ability but also provides a very important discard outlet if we happen to draw Thassa's Oracle or Morit of the Frost we can now discard them so they're in the graveyard which is exactly where they need to be for the combo to function and then at two mana we've got the full set of Undead Butler as another zombie that when it enters will mill three cards and when it dies we may exile it if we do return a creature from our graveyard to our hand so that can maybe help get back a Crib Breaker or Supplier to keep milling. And then we also have four copies of Fauna Shaman, which is one of the more important creatures in this deck. A 2-2 Elf can pay a green, tap it, discard a creature card to search our library for any creature card, reveal it and put it into our hand. So Fauna Shaman is often interested in finding our Morit of the Frost if we don't have two copies in the graveyard already. That way we have Morit in hand and then on the following turn we can discard it to the same Fauna Shaman, maybe get a second copy to then discard that as well. And that's one way of getting a double Morit in the graveyard. And then we also have four copies of Seder Wayfinder, which will mill four cards essentially, finding a land that can also help hit our land drops. So another useful way of maybe milling or Morit of the Frost and setting up other graveyard synergies. 
Then at 3 mana, the full set of Timurid calls the dead, an enchantment saga, which on the first two chapters will mill three cards, and then we can exile a creature or enchantment card from our graveyard to generate a 2-2 black zombie creature token. So we're not going to want to exile our one-off Thassa's Oracle, Morit of the Frost also needs to stay in the graveyard, but most other creatures or enchantments are fair game, and then we can easily assemble an army of zombie tokens, which can also help us draw with Crib Breaker, and then eventually on the final chapter we gain X life and scry X, where X is the number of zombies we control, so that also gives us a bit more life gain against the aggressive decks, and the card selection can also come in handy once we're ready to cast our Harald Unites the Elves to win the game. And then a Tyvar Jubilant Brawler, besides being a combo piece with Harald Unites the Elves on the final turn, is also very synergistic in this deck, since we may activate abilities of creatures we control as though those creatures had haste. So that means we can immediately activate a Crypt Breaker to discard and make a zombie, and more importantly we can immediately activate Fauna Shaman to discard a creature and tutor one up. So if we have a spare green mana available, we can play Tyvar, minus two, get back Fauna Shaman from the graveyard, and then still activate it, maybe discard a creature, putting Morit of the Frost in hand, or maybe putting Morit in the graveyard if we had one in hand already, so that can also help set up the combo. And the minus two could also get back a Seder Wayfinder if we just need to hit an extra land drop, or if we need to randomly mill four cards in the hopes of milling another Morit of the Frost, could also be the difference between winning and losing. And Tyvar can also get back Tragic Poet, which is a one mana one one, and that's also the reason why we have some white in our mana base can tap and sacrifice Tragic Poet to return an enchantment card from our graveyard to our hand. So that way we can access our Harald Unites the Elves if we don't have it in hand, but instead happen to mill several copies. So that way Tyvar essentially turns into an extra copy of Harald Unites the Elves, which is incredibly useful. Can also tutor up our Tragic Poet with Fauna Shaman and eventually discard it. And then a Tyvar also lets us immediately activate Tragic Poet, so we don't have to untap with it first, which can also make a pretty big difference. Can even chum block with the Tragic Poet and then still sacrifice it, getting back Harald Unites the Elves. Could technically also get back or Timurit calls it that, but I don't think that's going to happen very often. And then Tyvar also has a plus one ability to untap up to one target creature, which is incredibly useful alongside Fauna Shaman, so we can potentially untap Fauna Shaman and activate it a second time in the same turn to get double Merit of the Frost in the graveyard potentially, so that's also incredibly useful. So Tyvar has a ton of great synergy throughout. Then I've made the decision not to include any blue mana in the mana base, which could be useful if we want to hard cast Morit of the Frost. Let's say we have one in Graveyard, have Harald to Unites the Elves on the battlefield, then we could just cast Morit of the Frost, copying Harald to Unites the Elves to potentially set up the combo. But that does require five mana and also double blue, so it's not just a light blue splash, it's a pretty big commitment. And in a deck without a ton of other ramp or mana fixing, that's not very likely to come up. So I've made the decision to just have a black green mana base, couple pathways ways which can help us cast Tragic Poet in a pinch, but even there we typically want to just recur it with Tyvar and we don't need to hard cast it, and that way our mana base is a lot less painful, so we can hopefully stay alive longer against the aggressive decks. And then we also have one copy of Gaia Reach Sanitarium, which is another discard outlet built into our mana base. Can pay two mana, tap, and then each player draws a card and then discards a card. So it can be another way of discarding Moritz in case we don't have Fauna Shaman or a Crib Breaker. And then mostly just black green dual lands. And then sometimes we'll need double green as well if we want to play Fauna Shaman or Tyvar and activate Fauna Shaman in the same turn. So want to make sure we have as much black and green mana available as possible. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. We've got our Crypt Breaker to discard Moritz. And then we just need another one in Graveyard and eventually... We can try to draw into our Harald Unites the Elves up against the blue-red. Gonna wait on Crypt Breaker until we can play it with three zombies in play, so we can immediately draw a card in case of removal. So we can play Butler, then maybe a Timurit Calls the Dead, and then Crypt Breaker. Not the fastest hand in existence. Milled two more suppliers. So we can attack for one, play Butler, and now with our Sanitarium we've got another discard outlet in case Crib Breaker dies. Before we get a chance to activate it. And I suppose I could just play it now. That resolves. And we milled another Morit, perfect. So now we just need to draw Harald Unites the Elves and get another Morit in the graveyard, and then we could set up the combo. 
opponent with an impulse end of turn, so they could be on a blue red creativity combo deck with a new Xanagos as a finisher. Could see a turn three Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Otherwise, it's mostly interaction and card draw spells. Okay, we could double spell here Wayfinder plus Crib Breaker. Which might be better than Timurit Calls the Dead, since her opponent might be keeping up a counter spell here. So step one, probably play Wayfinder. See if that resolves. It does. And then we can try and sneak a Crib Breaker into play. We milled the Harald Unites the Elves, so any way of getting that back from the graveyard would also be nice. Play Crib Breaker. And then if they counter Crib Breaker, we'll just attack for two. Yep, make disappear. So at least we made a bit more progress than had we gone for Timurit Calls of Dead, which uh, the opponent would have countered, no doubt. Fire Impulse kills Wayfinder. Opponent doesn't want us to get anything back with Butler or mill more with the Supplier, even though the zombies are more valuable for our deck. Four mana. We're in big score territory. And there's Harald Unites the Elves, all right. So I just need to activate Sanitarium, discard Moritz, and then next turn, unless we draw Thassa's Oracle, Harald is going to win us the game. But uh, yeah, the opponent could also have their own combo here to try and kill us. Can play Tapped Overgrown Tomb and pass it back. Opponent has a Valakut Awakening. So I think in response we activate Sanitarium... So our opponent doesn't have any treasures in play yet, so if they are on creativity combo, we shouldn't be dead next turn. And then we just need to dodge another counter spell. Can try and bait it out with Timuret, or we can just go for it and hope for the best. It's going to be a tapped hall. And our opponent keeps up more mana. So, make this appear, we can potentially play around next turn by just hitting our land drop for the turn. Problem with... Passing here is that if our opponent does go end of turn, big score, untap creativity, we could be dead when we had the chance to just win the game. So step one, either way, is probably to attack, since we don't need the combat step to win the game. See if there's a response. Opponent went for awakening last turn instead of big score, so they would have had to draw into big score and have had creativity in hand already, which is possible. Yeah, let's just uh, Timur calls the dead. And then question is, do we want it to get countered? I guess our opponent knows about our land in hand, so probably no point in uh, slow rolling it. Play Timuret. See if there's a response. And then we can still play Butler. And then next turn I'm certainly going for it. Can get rid of a Wayfinder. Now, if our opponent is capable of uh, making a creature, then Make the Spear could still counter Haralds if they have something to sacrifice to casualty. In our graveyard, we still don't have a Thassa's Oracle, so we could technically draw it for a turn, which would be a little awkward. Volcanic Spite is good news, because it means no big score end of turn. So now we're just afraid of creature into make disappear with casualty. Or I guess double make disappear or some other counter spell. Get to untap. In the meantime, we're also applying a bit of pressure, which is always nice. So we can attack first. Get rid of a fauna shaman. And then I'll shock an overgrown tomb, so we have two extra mana to pay for make disappear potentially. And we'll see if our opponent knows what's incoming here. Because it doesn't seem like the most threatening card at first glance. Alright, it resolves. So we get to combo off here.
get back another Moritz. So we sack one to the legendary rule. Copy Harald unites the elves. Sack one to the legendary rule. Rinse and repeat. Until we get back our three mana planeswalker, which will return Thassa's Oracle. Fifteen cards remaining, so we're pretty close to winning. Find a couple more Moritz. There's a Thassa's Oracle, so our opponent can start to piece things together. And yeah, we'll see if there's any interaction they can have. Miller remaining three cards. And now it's time for Harald. Minus two, get back Thassa's Oracle, even if they remove Oracle in response. And we have zero blue devotion, we have zero cards remaining, so that's still enough to win the game. Trigger on the stack, and what's our opponent's response? An explosion, awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems keepable. We've got multiple zombies into Timurt Calls the Dead. And then Fauna Shaman to put Morit in Graveyard. Up against the red aggro. Kumano could also be annoying once it transforms since it exiles our creatures, which would prevent us from triggering Stitcher Supplier. So wanna jump with it while we can. Soulscar Mage, their opponent to red white aggro, maybe with Pia. And a portable hole exile supplier. Alright, so no death trigger here. We'll go with Undead Butler. Over Fauna Shaman, I think. Get our zombies in play for Timurit Calls the Dead. And we can expect some more removal spells too, so... Fauna Shaman's unlikely to activate anytime soon. Also want to play our 3-drop next turn, so we won't have the mana to activate anyway. Another Soul Scar. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure here. Two cards left in hand. Our deck is good at chum blocking on the ground at least. But another portable hole is gonna prevent us from jumping. Take 5, down to 14. Gotta hope there's no more spells to enable prowess in hand. Timurit can also gain some more life. For now, exile doesn't matter too much on that butler. Just wanna leave our Thassa's Oracle in there. One Seder Wayfinder can also come in handy. And yeah, that's not what we wanted to see. Reckless Impulse. Finding a play with fire to kill our token. Opponent hits us for a ton of damage. And then potentially showdown next turn to refuel. So this was kind of the worst case scenario. Harald in Graveyard. Want to keep one copy in case we can return it with a Poet. And then play Supplier plus another Timurit. Hope our opponent doesn't have land, but at the same time also doesn't enable prowess next turn. That seems unlikely. One more in Graveyard, one Harald can go. So we've got three blockers at least. Swiss Spear, one card left. And it's another burn spell. Bone Crusher. At least Showdown goes away, but uh, yeah, we're going to be forced to double chump. Supplier gets exiled, so that doesn't trigger. Can trade for etching at least, to go to one. Can we win the game here? I guess it would have been possible had we top decked Harald Unites the Elves. Now, I don't think we have a shot. One zombie, bottom land. So we're at 2 life. I guess if our opponent draws a land, they don't enable prowess next turn. Do I want to keep a creature in hand for Fauna Shaman is a question. 
There's only one Moritz in Graveyard. Could now play Butler, and if it dies, get something back from the Graveyard. Which could be useful. Although I don't have the white mana to cast the Poets. So yeah, we have to naturally draw one of our two remaining Harald Unites the Elves, basically. So I probably want as many zombies in play to scry next turn as possible. Another Harald goes to the graveyard, that's unfortunate, so there's only one left to naturally draw. Otherwise I need to draw Tyvar to get back Poets and immediately get back Harald. So it's going to be an uphill battle. But and found a land, alright, so they don't have the best of attacks. Just a Soulscar Mage. So I have to decide if I want to give up Fauna Shaman or an extra Zombie. And Fauna Shaman doesn't do a ton for me right now. So the extra Zombie to scry towards Tyvar or Harald is probably more important. Opponent takes out Fauna Shaman. We found a white mana. Bottom, bottom. And we're back to four, so yeah, technically not dead yet. Although anything to enable prowess is going to be pretty devastating. So now we have to double chum block. Butler will at least trigger. And uh, what do we get back? There's no poet in the graveyard, but without Tyvar I wouldn't be able to activate it right away anyways. So, yeah. There's not much worth getting back with Butler, but we can have a look. So let's say we top deck a Tyvar, cast it, get back Poets, then I would still need an extra land, which isn't happening if we draw Tyvar for turn. So yeah, I don't think Tyvar does it, so we need to just naturally draw our last Harald Unites the Elves, and then the card that mills the most is another Seder Wayfinder to try and mill Moritz. We found Crib Breaker, so that doesn't do it. Alright, now we're certainly dead. I guess technically still alive. Can double chump. Sanitarium could help me draw and discard. Although we need another blocker just to have a chance of surviving. I guess I'm not forced to uh, discard Crib Breaker. Can just discard whatever else we draw. But would be kind of tragic if we draw Harald Unites the Elves right now. Alright, just a land. Play Crib Breaker. And then hope for another land for the opponents. Pia, I guess Pia doesn't kill us. So we get another turn somehow. Hanging on to dear life. But it is once again double chump. And then now, I guess Tyvar would also be enough of a top deck since I can immediately get back Poets, activate it, and cast Harald Unites the Elves. So we bought ourselves a lot of extra turns. How many outs do we have? There's one Tyvar and one Harald Unites the Elves left. So 2 in 17, not the best odds. But uh, yeah, at least we're here and we've got a chance. And a butler. So now I can still activate Sanitarium, but then... Only Harald Unites the Elves is an out, since we don't have the mana for Tyvar, get back Poet. And a Fauna Shaman. Alright. Well, there was a lot of uh, potential draws towards a win, but couldn't quite get there in time. GG's. The very aggressive start forced us to chum block with a lot of our creatures, otherwise we might have had more zombies to scry, or uh, just more resources in general. But there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand is not the worst. Couple zombies to draw with Crib Breaker. Opponents playing a mill deck. Could be a good thing or a bad thing. If they mill Moritz, we're pretty happy. Thassa's Oracle, also a card we wouldn't mind having in the graveyard. And then Tyvar getting back, Thassa's Oracle could potentially win us the game if our opponent's not careful. 
So I probably don't want to play a supplier to help the opponent until we're ready to win the game with it. So I'll just play Crit Breaker for now. Founding can also cast a mill spell for free here. Cacophony mill for eight. Harl to nine stealths goes to the graveyard. I don't think I want to play Butler, so we can just activate Crypt Breaker and pass. I will be interested in resolving Tyvar, but I don't have to minus two right away. I guess Tyvar in play kind of gives away that we could get back Thassa's Oracle. Opponent Moses for four. And if we had Harald who unites the Elves in hands, that would be nice, but there's already two in Graveyard. Opponent runs out Secret Keeper. So the zombie beatdown plan is unlikely to get there. Opponent's got two cards left in hand. So unlikely to counter Tyvar, which is a card we want to resolve. Opponent might have a bounce spell here. Fading Hope, that's fine. So we can resolve Tyvar. 31 cards remaining. Timurit calls it that, seems a bit aggressive here. So yeah, let's just play Tyvar. Can plus. And then once we're close to losing to Mill, we can just play our own suppliers and then minus on Oracle to hopefully win the game. If not, we can maybe draw with Crib Breaker to uh, eventually draw into Harald Unites the Elves to win the game. That could also work. If they mill Tragic Poets, that's one way to access Harald Unites the Elves. No Poet in Graveyard yet. So yeah, drawing Tyvar in this matchup is great. 21 cards remain. Opponent's got one card in hand. A Hideous Laughter could mill quite a few. Is there anything else Tyvar could return? I guess Fauna Shaman could tutor up Tragic Poets. And then we can discard it. Yeah, that would be pretty effective here. So maybe I do minus Tyvar on Fauna Shaman. Meld Moritz. Crit Breaker can also immediately activate thanks to Tyvar. And then I'll just pass. So I think we've got to win next turn, even without the opponent milling us a bunch more. Since we already have double Marit in Graveyard. Ooh, Jace. Jace can mill for 15. 15 is not 18. I'll take note of all your so, let's see. I guess if our opponent mills Tragic Poets, that would be... Annoying, because then I have to minus Tyvor and we can't activate Poet right away. So I need to first activate Fauna Shaman to tutor up Tragic Poet. Although I guess Tyvor still needs to get it back. I mean, I guess we can just win the game with Thassa's Oracle at this point. I will yeah, two cards left, so I shouldn't be overthinking it. Just play Supplier. And then... Uh, minus get back Thassa's Oracle, and that's game. But uh, yeah, would have been fun to... still win with Harald who knights the Elves somehow. But without a white mana, or without Tyvar in play, that would have been a little harder. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. We've got Fauna Shaman, which can tutor up Moritz and discard it several times, and then Harald unites the elves to eventually win the game. It's not necessarily the fastest hand in existence. Opponent with turn one Gracer, so likely on Lotus Field, which is a combo deck capable of killing us around turn four even. For now, play Crit Breaker. The good news is our opponent's unlikely to have a ton of interaction, so we get to enact our own game plan here. Important tracker, no lotus field yet. 
And yeah, let's just speedrun Fauna Shaman. And then next turn I can activate Fauna Shaman, maybe even play another one. Since we do need to start tutoring up more Ritz. Wayfinder we could also still play. Just to hit our land drop and maybe mill another Moritz. There's a Vizier, so our opponent's just ramping into their finishers the old fashioned way. Okay, so what's the plan here? The fastest I can win is in two turns, on turn five basically here, unless I happen to mill double Moritz with Sator Wayfinder, which I guess is possible. So I should still give that a try. And then activate Fauna Shaman, get more Ritz. I think I still play another Fauna Shaman right now. So next turn I have the option of activating double Fauna Shaman in addition to play Wayfinder. And then Butler can go fetch up more Ritz. And hope her opponent doesn't cast anything too scary in the meantime. Impulse, if they find a Lotus Field, that represents 6 mana right away. And there it is. So opponent has enough mana to cast an Emergent Ultimatum, which is maybe what they have in hand. Pour over the pages, also quite good. Untap Lotus Field and Sanctum, that's 4 mana. And another Impulse. Alright, so we're not getting Emergent Ultimatum this turn it seems. But our opponent's pretty likely to go for the next turn. Another pour. Alright, opponent keeps going. Four mana. They could also have some channel lands to interact, I suppose. For now a grazer. And opponent puts Boseju on the battlefield. So they've seen a lot of cards and they get to untap with a ton of mana. Recovery, get back, poor. So one unknown in hand. Okay, discard Butler, get more Ritz. I don't think there's anything I can get to really interact here, so just gotta go for our own combo. And then now play Wayfinder, hoping to find a green source so I can still double activate Fauna Shaman. And then I should play Wayfinder before activating Shaman for another more Ritz, since then it's more likely that I mill one. Okay, found our green source that's untapped. Alright, so next turn I can win the game. Activate Shaman, discard Murit, get another one, discard it once again, and then next turn Harald unites the elves. So yeah, pass a turn and hope our opponent cannot win the game here, but it is looking very likely. Opponent's making black mana with Lotus Field, so that does point towards Emergent Ultimatum. Yep. Alright, let's see what our opponent can uh, find here. Two mana left, a Vizier activation, that's three mana. And then pour over the pages in hand. So, can't give them Omniscience, opponent will get Leer and Chandra. And those can certainly do some damage. Opponent gets to copy, pour over the pages if they cast it. Don't really care about Chandra killing any of my creatures, so that's at least something we've got going for us. But can our opponent keep comboing is a question. There's double Balagad recovery in the graveyard. So those can maybe loop back Chandra to win the game. At least they only have the one Lotus Field in place, so Poor is not making the maximum amount of mana. Opponent needs to go full control to make sure they can uh, float mana here before casting another Poor. So they can untap Lotus Field once again. And our opponent did make sure to do that. We also need to make sure to activate Fauna Shaman if we're still alive. So our opponent's got to draw a ton of cards here. Thespian's stage can now copy Lotus Field. And then now Poor is making even more mana. Chandra can also still activate. 
So we'll see. At least there's no hidden strings to keep making mana. The mana creatures here are not quite what the opponent needs. So another pour over the pages. Now actually nets them one extra mana. They have black floating, so that doesn't necessarily make it easy to cast another emergent ultimatum. Would prefer to have blue floating so you can make double blue with Sanctum. But they might have a Vizier of Tumbling Saints to make more black. Another pour. Yep, and they can get it back with Leer once again. Feels like they've cast uh, quite a few copies now to an exile. So now they can emerge into Ultimatum. Still can give them Omniscience. But then our opponent gets to maybe tutor up a win condition with a Mastermind's Acquisition, who knows. Flashback poor first. Yeah, gotta sit through this, but if our opponent doesn't fully combo off, we would likely win the game next turn, so gotta give it a shot. And our opponent's just gonna hard cast omniscience now. Yeah, and that should pretty much wrap it up. If they have some card draw left in hand. Cannot cast Recovery for free, still need to pay its flashback costs, but there's a free Emergent Ultimatum. And I don't think our opponent's gonna mess up from here. So now anything that makes mana we don't care about, but card draw is bad. So... Opponent's got 18 cards left. I mean, at this point, maybe we just deny the Mastermind's Acquisition and then hope they don't draw into it with Peer into the Abyss. But I don't see how that's gonna happen. Opponent can still make more mana to then flash back. Let's say appear into the abyss. So eight cards left. And there's the acquisition. Get a card from outside the game. And there's the approach. So that's how they're gonna win the game here. Acquisition with flashback. Get Approach and cast it for free. Alright, that's too bad. We can uh, activate our Fauna Shaman here to show what we would have done. Discard Moritz, get another one. Activate Fauna Shaman again. And we had Harald Unites the Elves in hand, ready to go. Doesn't matter what else we get. Could get Tragic Poets, which is pretty fitting here. And we explode onto the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hand has multiple ways to access Harald Unites the Elves, either by casting it or Poet getting it back. So we've got that redundancy. What we don't have is a lot of ways to find more Ritz and put it in the graveyard. But I think I'll still give this a shot. Crib Breaker can discard Poet, maybe assemble an army of zombies to hopefully draw into more mill engines. Fauna Shaman would also be great alongside Tyvar especially. Opponent's blue red, Seder Wayfinder isn't bad. So we could play Wayfinder and then wait on uh, discarding Tragic Poets. That seems acceptable. Or we can uh, just make zombies two turns in a row. Uh, let's just play Wayfinder. If our opponent kills Crypt Breaker, then Tyvar could always get it back, but we actually milled Moritz and Fauna Shaman. I considered playing this pathway on green, so we have double green to play Tyvar and maybe activate Fauna Shaman in the same turn. Volcanic Spite out of the blue-red deck to kill Crib Breaker. Is your opponent on maybe a creativity combo deck? Butler the draw. So I could play Tyvar, but it would be better if I can activate Fauna Shaman in the same turn. So maybe I just play Tyvar and plus, so it doesn't die to a burn spell, and then next turn we could minus. So I guess attack for one, and then untap, in case there's any haste creatures, but I doubt it. If our opponent's producing a haste creature, it's going to be a world spine worm as a 30-powered creature with trample. 
So that's turn three Fable, another Harald unites the elves. Okay, so we already have one more in Graveyard. So I just need to minus Tyvar, get back Fauna Shaman, activates, discarding, let's say, Tragic Poet here. And then next turn, cast Harald unites the elves. So I guess I could use an extra land so we can activate Fauna Shaman, discard another Moritz, and also cast Harald unites the elves in the same turn. We're in this together. So discard Poets, and get Moritz of the Frost. And then cast Undead Butler, or I could activate Sanitarium, giving me another draw step towards a land that's maybe better. Although we could lose both our blocker for Tyvar and Tyvar in one fell swoop. Although I don't think we care. Yeah, let's just activate Sanitarium. Can do it end of turn, so the opponent doesn't get to use their extra card potentially. Yeah, with Sanitarium we don't even need Fauna Shaman to untap, we just cast our ult unites the elves, and if it resolves we win the game. We've got two attempts. So I'm hoping our opponent somehow taps out. We'll keep Tyvar around for an extra turn. A big score, okay. They could still have Make Disappear in hand for all we know. I'll activate Sanitarium now, giving them less information on what they have in hand. And then Morit needs to go. So, at least if they have a Make Disappear, we force them to cash in their treasures. So, Harald unites the Elves. If it resolves, we would win the game. But our opponent maybe doesn't know it yet. Alright, there we go. Get back Moritz. Copy Harald. And so it begins. Mildor Thassa's Oracle already. So a few more iterations of the loop here before we're without a library. So just need to avoid misclicking. Luckily the combo is pretty fast to go through on Arena. There's definitely a few combo decks that require a bit more effort. Sixteen cards left, so a few more to go. Tyvar also mills a few cards. So we don't have to be at zero before getting back Tyvar necessarily. Alright, now get back Tyvar, make sure we keep the three loyalty one, although I guess the other one we hadn't activated yet, so I would have done it as well. Get back Thassa's Oracle, and even if they remove it, we have zero cards on library, so zero devotion is enough for a win. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, our hand is... Yeah, probably keepable. We've got our Crit Breaker as a potential discard outlet and a way to hopefully draw into Harald Unites the Elves. For now, play Supplier, which is ecstatic to trade for Pack Leader, but probably won't see them uh, offer the trade. Opponent does. I would like to keep the extra zombie to eventually draw with Crit Breaker, but also just want to buy ourselves more time. And uh, milling a Moritz would have been great. Another pack leader. Times two. Explains why they attacked. Okay, can go for Wayfinder now. Which I'm also happy to trade. And then next turn deploy a couple zombies. We've got Poet in the graveyard, so Tyvar can get it back. 
which can then in turn get back Harald Unites the Elves. It's our opponent, maybe a Werewolf deck. And just a Stormseeker hitting us for three. Okay, so I'm not in a hurry to play Tyvar, since there's no Harald Unites the Elves to get back with Tragic Poet yet. So go for Butler and Crypt Breaker. That seems acceptable. And then Crypt Breaker can discard a couple lands to make more zombies. There's Harald Unites the Elves, so now we just need double more bits in Graveyard and we're good to go. So far we didn't mill any. Arlen, okay. It's gonna grow Pack Leader times two. They can make a pair of wolves, so yeah, the pressure's definitely increasing very quickly here. Probably have to double block. Could also triple block Stormseeker, which is not unreasonable. And then we would lose probably Crib Breaker and Wayfinder. This way Butler can also maybe get back a creature from the graveyard. Another Stitcher Supplier or Wayfinder could be okay. But we may not get another turn. So let's go for Stitcher Supplier, which we can play for one mana. Fauna Shaman would also be kind of nice with Tyvar, but I don't have a creature in hand to discard to the ability, because that's one way of getting multiple Moritz in the graveyard. So probably just have to get lucky with Stitcher Supplier. We drew Moritz, so I can discard it with Crib Breaker. This turn Tyvar get back Poets. And Poet can chump and then activate. So I think we're still on the Supplier plan. And then, let's see. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to activate Crib Breaker and cast Harald Unites the Elves next turn. But um, I think this is still the play. No Moritz is bad news. All right, milled another Moritz, so only really need one more in Graveyard to win the game. And there's always the chance that we mill another Moritz when we go to cast Harald Unites the Elves. And then we can copy it with Moritz as well, so we do get to see a few more cards here. Got three creatures that are happy to block. So it's going to be close at nine life. Can the opponent play another large creature? Night Pack Ambusher. Okay, grows pack leader. Opponent can give it haste. So with three blockers, we are still technically alive. But I'll be forced to jump with all three. Opponent goes after Tyvar with one of them, reconsiders. Nope, still going after Tyvar. So now I could leave Crib Breaker on the battlefield as a discard outlet for Moritz. But as we said, we won't have the mana to. Uh, Discard Morit with Crib Breaker and cast Harald Unites the Elves. I don't think this really matters. Definitely want to block with Supplier just to give us another chance of milling Morit. Guess we'll keep Crib Breaker on the battlefield. And then before damage, make sure that Poet gets back Unites the Elves. Get to mill three. Sivar down. No Moritz in sight. All right, well, let's cross our fingers here. Mill three. Oracle's good to mill. Gotta get back Moritz. Copy, unites the elves. Mill three and no Moritz. That's too bad. Yeah, we were very close. Just needed one more Moritz in Graveyard. Can minus get back Fauna Shaman. Thanks to Tyvar, we can activate right away. But we're still going to be very dead. Yeah, close game. Just needed one more Morit in Graveyard. There's two left in 17. Attack when they're most vulnerable. One more mana would have done it too.
All out attack. Wolves at Tyvar, so I can chump chump and still take lethal. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is not particularly inspiring. No Tyvar, no Harald Unites the Elves, no Fauna Shaman. So just a lot of milling and then hoping to get lucky. Let's just take a mulligan. Okay, this is probably better. Let go of one Wayfinder or maybe a land even. And then if we draw another green source, I can maybe keep this for white, although we wouldn't mind double green for Fauna Shaman sometimes. Okay, on green it is. Play Wayfinder. And found a Blooming Marsh, not bad. Get our Timurid Calls of Dead going as soon as possible. And we drew Harald Unites the Elves, that's huge. So now we just need to double mill more Ritz to potentially set up the win. This is probably getting countered, but then next turn we can double spell Wayfinder and Fauna Shaman. Could also consider keeping a creature in hand for Shaman. And there's one more Ritz in Graveyard already. Okay, so Timurt calls it dead. We're always happy to exile with another one. Removal on the zombie would be acceptable. So we could potentially win on turn 4 here if our opponent taps out for Fable and we happen to mill another Morit. And yeah, there's Fable. Can we mill another Morit? That would be pretty epic. Three more cards. Thassa's Oracle got milled, that's still good to know. And uh, can exile one Harald. So I could try my luck by just casting a Harald Unites the Elves here, since we do get to mill three and then three more when we copy it with Morit of the Frost. If we let the opponent untap, they'll have access to a bunch of mana, which could mean interaction. Fauna Shaman also likely to get removed by Burn Spell. So I actually think our best chance is to just cast Harald Unites the Elves right now. Mill three. Okay, get to mill three once again. No more it's that's too bad. But we can still get back our Tyvar, which can mine us getting back Tragic Poets, which can buy back another Harald Unites the Elves. So we've got another shot at it next turn, maybe. We're in this together. Poden taps out for Crackling Drake. Okay, that's definitely acceptable. And we'll trade for the Shaman. Fading Hope to bounce it. That's fine. So, don't have to activate Poet right now. Can still untap since we have a Tyvar in play. Take our turn. So, no zombies in play to scry. So what's our current situation? There's no Moritz in the graveyard to get back with Harald Unites the Elves. So we somehow need to mill another copy and Seder Wayfinder is one way to do that. Although I won't have the mana to cast Harald Unites the Elves afterwards. Could also play Fauna Shaman and then thanks to Tyvar I get to activate it. Find another Morit of the Frost. And then untap Fauna Shaman to activate it again. Yeah, that's gonna be the play. Yeah, this deck's got a lot of neat interactions. Get Moritz. Untap with Tyvar. And then we can activate, thanks to our untapped Overgrown Tomb, discard Moritz, get whatever other creature we want, and then put get back Harald Unites the Elves, and next turn hopefully win the game if there's no counter spells. I guess our Sagas are also gonna deplete, but that's fine as long as... Uh, we have another Unite Steals to get back more it, it doesn't matter. And we can do everything at instant speed. 
Just need to make sure to activate our creatures in response to Tyvar dying. And it's unlikely to survive here. Opponents casting a couple cantrips. They will still have a treasure available, most likely, to cast a counter spell if needed. Strangle kills Fauna Shaman. That's acceptable. So what do we want to get? No point in getting Murit when I cannot cast it. So another Fauna Shaman, or maybe a Crypt Breaker. Don't really need to mill anymore. So yeah, either Fauna Shaman or Crypt Breaker are fine. Shaman down. Can still jump with the poets if they only attack Tyvar with a Shaman token. And a Tolarian Terror. So if the Shaman attacks, they'll still get a treasure to potentially cast uh, Make Disappear with a uh, casualty. So Tyvar is going to die, but we will get to chump the Shaman on the way out before damage sacrifice poets. Get back Harald Unites the Elves. Alright, well, let's hope their remaining cards don't include a counter spell. If I shock myself with Overgrown Tomb, I make Harald Unites the Elves seem more important, but they may not want to sack a creature to casualty, so we'll see if this resolves. It does? Okay, so now we're off to the races. Get back Moritz. That's definitely the advantage of playing kind of an unknown strategy. The opponent may not know what to prioritize, but of course possible they don't have any counter spells in hand whatsoever. Get back Moritz. Okay. Well, we managed to combo off a couple times here in today's video, mostly against blue-red decks somehow, which you would think have the most interaction between counter spells and removal. But uh, our combo deck is pretty resilient. A lot of ways to assemble the combo, a lot of redundancy with Tyvar getting back poet, and letting us activate cards like Fauna Shaman right away. It's mostly the faster aggro decks in the format that can kill us before we manage to set up, since we are a resilient combo deck, but we're not the fastest combo deck out there. One card left, now we can get back Tyvar, which will mill a few more. Get Thassa's Oracle. And that should be game. Unless they can counter our triggered ability here, which there are a few counter spells that uh, fit that description. They're gonna try and kill Oracle in response, but it's not enough to prevent us from winning here. Zero devotion, but zero cards in library, and there we have it. Awesome. So yeah, this Rube Goldberg machine of a deck is pretty satisfying once it goes off. Not gonna be the most competitive option on the rank ladder, so I wouldn't recommend it for ranked play, but if you've got the cards for it somehow, it's just fun to see it all happening. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.